A new game that's gone viral in China has hit people's screens with surprising speed. At the time when the game's behemoths like NetEase have been waiting months for approval to launch games. That's because this new game, Sheep a Sheep, is a mini program with ByteDance's Douyin and Tencent's messaging app WeChat, meaning users can access the game through the apps. Here's everything we know about it. First things first, what's the game even about and how do you play it? In recent days, a new pass-through minigame called Yangli Gi Yang, which trans translates to Sheep a Sheep, with a clearance rate of less than 0.1% has become a national online sensation in China's social media. It has, however, sparked debate over its profitability and game rules, which have drained some users' interest and desire to share personal info. The game is available as a Tencent mini program. The player must click to move a specific block into a strip of the bottom of a pile of randomly stacked blocks with different patterns. To be eliminated from the game, players must connect three matching blocks, those who remove all of the tiles win, however, if the strip contains seven blocks, the player loses. Moving on, how popular has it really gotten? Anecdotally, the number of this reporter's WeChat contacts who tried the mini-program game nearly tripled to nearly 300 over one September weekend. Two of six people on a bench in a Beijing subway car were seen playing the game the following weekend. Tenant's social app WeChat was created by Beijing Jinyu Technology, a gaming startup that primarily focuses on casual and social games. Previously, the company created a WeChat game called Pirates, which generated more than 100 million yuan in revenue the first month and attracted 25 million daily active users. According to the Kami data, the game reached the top of the iOS free game chart in less than a half day on September 15th. With over 45,000 downloads in a single day, next up a little about the approvals and licensing for game software in China, the developer of Sheep, a Sheep Beijing Jinyo technology, was founded in January 2021, according to the business's database in Tianyachi, the company registered the game software in late July of this year, and according to posts on its official Weibo, a Chinese Twitter-like social media platform, Jian Yu reached the Sheep's game a few weeks later in early September. According to Tianyanchi's data, NetEase's first game approval in more than a year came 10 months after the company registered the software. Because of Beijing's increased scrutiny of the gaming industry, the National Administration of Press and Public stopped approving new games from publishers between July 21st and April 2022, a search for Sheep on the approval list produced only results for other games from 2018 or earlier. WeChat and ByteDance don't currently require a game license to publish HTML5 games on their platforms, according to Rich Bishop, CEO of Apple in China, which publishes international software in China. Despite this, he believes it'll change in the coming months to existing regulations are strictly enforced. HTML ML5 games are created using coding tools similar to those used for websites and can be distributed across multiple platforms because Sheep is Sheep only recently went viral. It's still very new to everyone, especially regulators. The mini program guidelines for online games on WeChat didn't include a requirement for a game license. The document did specify that qualification certificates were required depending on the game category, although it wasn't immediately clear from the online developer guides. An administrator's response to an official online forum query last year stated what a license wasn't required for games without in-app purchases. Now, let's talk about Beijing's restrictions and how the games managed to avoid them. The majority of Beijing's game restrictions have centered on limiting minors' playing time. According to rules announced in August 2021, children and teenagers under the age of 18 can only play for up to three hours per week at designated times on weekends and holidays. According to App in China, getting the administrator's approval for a game license is required for paid games and games in in-app purchases on the app. Apple China App Store. However, the rules for free-to-play games supported by advertisements such as Sheep a Sheep are less clear. A surge in social media attention around a long weekend in mid-September helped attract players, reportedly in the tens of millions, eager to win the game as soon as possible, even if it meant watching hours of ads in total. Finally, here's how the game manages to keep players so engaged. The difficulty in the first level is extremely low. Once the player understands the basic operations of the game's principles, the difficulty rises dramatically in one second level. Where all the tiles are staggered and stacked together, obscuring the lower ones, the player has no idea what patterns will appear on the subsequent layer. The popular game is only three levels, and the data shows only 0.1% of its millions of players have even completed them. The game's simplicity in mechanics and social communication nature is one of the most intuitive aspects of its success. It has no entry barriers, and the difficulty of the second level encourages users to share, mock, and discuss their efforts with their WeChat Tencent friends. 
many young Knightsons have expressed how addictive the game's hard fun is, with some staying up all night to try to pass the second level. When asked what motivated them to compete, they said regional pride. The new app cleverly divides players into regions, installing a strong sense of belonging and competition. Guangdong is currently in the first place, followed by Su Jin. The success of this demonstrates the value of a localized strategy. In addition, the game makes use of organic private traffic. It provides users with in-game assistance in exchange for WeChat shares. Sheepishy provides a textbook success story from which to learn as luxury houses venture into the minigame sector to entertain existing and potential young consumers. What is the name of the game? Think locally to maximize your reach. Now on to other news. First up, Pokemon Go in-game prices will be increasing in select regions this month. Niantic, the developer of Pokemon Go, and Pikmin Bloom has issued a notice about in-game currency prices increasing in select regions around the world beginning October 5th. Niantic stated on its official website it wanted to be proactive with the pricing notice and it was due to changes in app store price tiers. Similarly, changes are expected to be implemented on other mobile platforms. In response to these changes, Niantic will not make immediate action, but will instead monitor the impact and then navigate these changing conditions globally. As expected, the Pokemon Go community has expressed disappointment in the in-game price increase. Particularly on the Android side of things, Android players have gotten the short end of the stick as their price increase is being driven by Apple's price charge. It's difficult to say which is worse. Raising price only on one platform and risking cross-platform account sharing or raising price on both platforms. The optics of this story make it difficult to find a positive angle. Up next, Roblox removes Meat Grinder, Ukraine vs. Russia game. The world's biggest gaming platform for children, Roblox, has removed two games where players could fight and kill one another as Russians or Ukrainians. One of them, War on Larkiv, Ukraine, was featured in the Roblox Discovery section and received 90,000 plays in less than two weeks. Both games violated Roblox community standards and they were removed within four hours of being contacted by the BBC. War on Larkiv was set in fictitious city that resembled Kharkiv, where hundreds of people were killed in indiscriminate shelling following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February of this year. The other game, Battle for Ukraine, has been available on the Roblox website for several months. It allowed players to witness the bombing of cities such as Maripol, which was besieged and largely destroyed earlier this year by Russian forces. Every day, 50 million players, mostly children, log into Roblox to explore, play minigames, and create their own experiences. Finally, Sega announces its first blockchain game. The agreement with Japanese blockchain company Double Jump Tokyo, as reported Supported by 4Gamer will result in the development of a new game based on Sega's popular Sengokushi Taisen series. Sengokushi Taisen is a real-time strategy game popular in Japanese arcades that involves players collecting physical cards that they can place on the playing area to make them appear in the game. The new title, which will be developed by Double Jump Tokyo with Sega lending its IP, will use blockchain technology, but it's unclear how this will work, though it may involve using to record the ownership of each card. The game's release date and platform information have yet to be confirmed, but depending on when it's released, it could be the first blockchain game produced with Sega's involvement. Mention of the technology increased last year as many major companies and celebrities, including Nike and McDonald's, launched their own initiatives. Sega appears to have been experimenting with blockchain and NFT technology for some time. It registered a trademark for Sega NFT in January, just a week after CEO Haruki Satomi appeared to have cooled on the idea slightly, acknowledging the current negativity surrounding the NFT landscape. That's a wrap for this video, my friends. How do you think this game will manage to stay trending, and how long for? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.